school jazz band in Berkeley High School, whenever that was, in the 60s, you know, we were, we were 15. I was a year ahead in high school because I accidentally skipped a grade. It wasn't, it was a mistake. So I was ahead of him. I was in 11th grade and he was in 10th grade. And um, we became friends. I was a trombone player at that time. I always remember being jealous because jazz band was right around lunch. So Mike could eat a sandwich and play the piano, but being a trombone player, I couldn't do that. I had to wait. But anyway, we used to bring our lunch, and then after lunch, I had a car, and we would drive to Jack and Box and have another lunch and listen to K-Jazz. I remember it's the first time we heard Miles Davis stuff driving down the street. It's like, oh my God, was that? It was like a Rhodes, wow. right? Yeah. And it was like, we were just so into it, you know. Love you, but... but it just has such a great feel. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, I can never fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't know. I think it's good. What's different about this record for you? I think uh, I wanted it to be more profound. I wanted it to be really meaningful. I think I'm going to call it memoir. And just like I wrote my book on that note, I'm just like want it to really be deep in me and uh, from me deep, you know, from deep inside me and from all the past and where I am now. And I just wanted to, you know, have it be very contained and yet free at the same time. He's a unique musician. He doesn't really sound like anybody. He doesn't approach music the same as most people either. Um, mm. So here's the deal. Oh, oh. Ford, I think we're playing a melody at the, right on it. Right. Uh, let me go back here. I'll take two solos. On the fourth time when I play the melody, uh -huh. you kind of solo around it. Remember that? So Lee. It's it's oh. it's a kind of a loose bossa jet like a oh, straight wow. eights kind of vibe. Kind well, of the way we did it originally. I, I recorded it. Let's see what we did. I don't remember what the fuck. Professional man, you're a professional musician. Well, I got a phone. Okay, I think so you're a professional. Yes, yeah. that's the quality. You did a lot of whole notes, kind of. Yeah, I'm gonna do whole. It's notes. really a Shirley Horn kind of, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So he, he so now we have the loop. So he, I want him to do more of the thing he was doing like that with us, but we're gonna keep it. We're gonna have the clicks. I don't know what you play here. Four, three. I'll just play a lot of whole notes. Whatever you're playing, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna let it be. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, at that, you know, so four times through, I don't know if that's going to be too long. Oh, I think it'd be cool. I mean. That feels great. Yeah, Alan. Fuck yeah. Here we go. One, two.
these two guys for a few years now. What? Yeah, I'd say uh, uh, about five years. Yeah, so uh. what is it about them that draws you, and, and what do you think it, it brings to your playing, this, this trio and having gotten to play together for, for so many years? Well, you know, I love these two guys musically and personally, and that's important to me. I really love them. They're really great guys, and they really have a lot to offer as people. And they're a lot of fun to be with and travel with. You know, we played not too long ago at SF Jazz. And, you know, we had a blast, right? But musically, they bring a lot. Ben Allison really is a composer. He's not just a bassist. I mean, he is a great bassist, but he's a composer first. So whenever we deal with my music or the music that we're going to play together, and sometimes we play some of his compositions. I've recorded a couple of those. Uh, it's all about the big picture of the music. What's the feeling? Is it a groove? Is it happening? What's the structure? You know, it's a really not just can I just play my stuff on bass? You know, it's not that. And with Alan Mednar, the same thing. Alan Mednar, you know, I I write the structure of the song. I'll have a melody. I'll have chord changes usually in a format. And sometimes I'll write some bass ideas. But I like I like you know Ben comes up with really great ideas. And with Alan Mednar, I'll just say. Okay, here's the kind of feeling I'm thinking about, Alan. Can you give me a Mednard beat? That's what I call it, Mednard beat. So he'll come up with something. So a lot of the stuff we're doing, all the stuff we're doing on this album, I wanted it to be... One thing I wanted to do on this album was have a lot of drums in it. Not necessarily drum solos, but lots of drums being played all the time. So that maybe Ben would really hold it down a little bit. And I would solo. And you know, it's not about... It's just like having this sort of churning kind of rhythmic thing happening you know so with Alan he's very delicate and very sensitive he never plays too loud or too much but it's always simmering under you know you listen to it you know which I really love so for me you know the, I mean if you're playing acoustic piano man it's, a, it's not a loud instrument you can't really play that loud I can't play with loud drummers anymore like I used to you know so uh, the way the three of us play together, they really, they go with me because I am not a perfect musician. So I'll like push it ahead or get lost or, you know, whatever will happen. And they don't mind, man. We just play. We just play with each other. So it really is, is like a three people, three people hanging out and having a discussion and laughing. And you go on this tangent or that tangent and we get back to, say, to the subject maybe or maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a conversation. It's like talking to you. best chords in the world. introduced to Michael, i pretty sure through a good mutual friend, one of my best friends, Steve Cardenas, guitarist, recommended uh, Michael to me, and it turns out that we live in the same neighborhood, like three blocks from each other, <laughs> and had been for many years, and for some reason had never met. And of course I was aware of him, and had heard his name for a long time, um, and then was surprised to learn he lived so close, and we just started getting together, you know, um, just start going over his house and playing tunes and improvising, kind of messing around, and we found we really just enjoyed playing together a lot. So, what is it with this album? You've done a number of albums with him. What do you think is different about this album? Um, you know, I mean, it, certain things are familiar. The, the, the feeling we get as a trio in terms of like our dynamic and our um, you know, willingness to kind of take risks and, and take chances and, and 
go different places and Michael's such a you know his his uh, his mind works in, in really incredible and mysterious and interesting ways so it's like you know there's always a lot of freedom in the music so that is very much still happening this session um, we've never recorded together in this studio so it's a different feel the last couple of records we've recorded in his apartment <laughs> you know right next to each other where we're just all in the same room so this feels different in that regard but I've recorded a lot of records in this space so I'm familiar with it um, the music is all new I mean there's maybe a few tunes from you know that I've played once or twice in the time I've known him but for the most part we're just putting this together really just for this record so the music is new and fresh uh, which just means that we have to find something on the tunes we usually play them once or twice and, and before they you've noticed we played them once or twice before they settle into their the form that they need to be so that that has been kind of uh, an experiment this time uh, having Nick here as a, as a another set of ears has, has changed the way we have approached the music for sure yeah. but yeah I mean most of it's familiar I mean it's very this band is really easy it's like easy music to make in a way, even though the music itself is challenging. But what I mean is, it's um, there's a lot of trust and love and, and support and creativity. So, you know, everyone feels at ease the whole way through, which just makes it fun. I met Michael through Ben Allison. Um, I think it was just like a just a just a session, and then started playing. And then I think we've done like two records now, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, you've played with a lot of people, a lot of amazing people. What do you think it is about Michael that makes him different or special? I mean, what, what, what do you get playing with Michael? Oh, it's just like total freedom on the bandstand, you know, like, we'll rehearse things, but, you know, we'll, like, on, on the bandstand, it's like, can totally change and everyone's cool with it, you know, and it's like a lot of, there's a lot of room for experimenting, but also just trying stuff out, which is cool. I can do that. It's just got a funkier feel. These are more recent tunes, but some are older yeah. tunes, right? That you haven't even recorded uh, before. Yeah, uh, yeah. A couple are tunes that I never recorded. That you know, I look through all my stuff, and some tunes I wrote in the '70s, you know. And uh, one's called "On My Mind," and the other's called "No Low Contendra." And uh, yeah, I just had already said these tunes. I mean, I'd done some demos of them, but I'd never gotten them recorded. And I thought, because this would be great with this trio, you know. I'd written them for larger groups, you know, with horns and stuff. And then a lot of them were tunes I'd written in the last five years. And One Wheel of Life I'd recorded, a ballad that I really love. And uh, then I did one standard I'd never played before called You Changed. You've Changed by Carl Fisher, amazingly. Uh, but I knew it because Billy Holiday had sung it. And I was in Europe and I played a, a, a couple of shows with the uh, a singer sitting in with my band, and we did that tune as an encore, and it was so moving. I thought, God, I really, I'd like to learn this song for me, you know, to play it. So it's fun to put in one tune like that. So in terms of like continuity in life, you've lived such a long life and done so many extraordinary things musically. What is it like to take tunes that you wrote 50 years ago and, and be playing them now? I'm not really thinking about it. I'm just playing them, you know. I mean, there, I had a lot of tunes, but I went, I went through all these tunes to try to find the ones that I thought would let me express what I wanted to express on this album. And uh, these are, these are ones that just seem good. And I work with Nick Chembroke, who I've been friends with since high school. He's producing it. But we just agree that these tunes would allow me to, you know, express what I'm trying to express. And it's really more about the compositions and the sound and the arrangements and stuff like that. I mean, it's the piano playing for sure, 
but I really concentrated on that, on the, you know, making sure that the composition said what I wanted to say. And what is that at this point in your life? What, what are you feeling at this point in your life? What is it that you, I mean, you talked a little bit earlier about sort of calling it memoir and things. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can put it into words. I really don't. I just know it's a certain feeling I get when I hear these people that I love, like Bill Evans and Miles Davis. Oh, there's a, you know, there's a feeling in those two particularly that I've been thinking about a lot. And I don't really know how to describe it. It's sort of very personal. It's very uh, organized and disorganized at the same time, you know? And the music, you know, I mean, I don't, you don't hear all the stuff that they recorded that they don't put out, right? Unless actually some albums, they do do that now. You know, you hear a lot of outtakes, Miles Davis or Bill Evans and you go, oh, I see why they didn't put them out. You know, they're great, but it's not as great. So it's not to just be and play. I don't want to just say, I'm just playing, man. I play this, I play a tune. I just wanted it to be thoughtful, but still have energy. So I, you know, I, I don't know. It's when I approach the songs, whether they're newer songs or they're older songs, I have the same approach. I'm just trying to see how I can hear it. How do I really hear the harmony? How do I really hear the melody? How can I play it? You know, it's just all the same kind of mix of s science and soul, you know. That's right, yours is right, mine is wrong. Okay, so. So yeah, oh, well, if you go to the second inning, you'll be perfect. Da, da, da. Yeah. So I'm not sure what happened, why we got a bars off on the Well, maybe because mine's wrong and I was following this chart. I have four pages of music. Right. Four pages of music, two times. Uh, but we're not going to get all the way to the very end. We're going to end where it says, Fine after my solo. Okay. Got it. Your solo is on the PC? Yeah. I'm going to solo maybe on those other chords that go around, too, at letter C. Well, you know these. Just no, no. I'm just saying. I'm uh, maybe. I'm just saying that on that letter C, yeah, when it's just kind of going around. I don't know what I'm going to do there. Actually, maybe I'll just do those notes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, well, let's try it. <laughs> 